lists again. So this is where we left off the tier list like a month ago. Obviously a lot of work has to be done here. I think it's safe to say Dog will come down below these at number five. Even though Draven and Ash are worse statistically, they're going to give you better results overall. Kog'Maw is back to being a pick that's good against tanks and kind of bad against uh, mobile bruiser stuff. That, like Ribbon that can flash on him and be on top of him. Tristana is going to stay where she is. We're going to replace Jinx with Varus. Mira can come up a little bit. Lista, Samira, stay here. Mechanical champions that don't have a great skill ceiling. Like, they, they do, but you're not rewarded for the skill ceiling as much as you were before the durability patch because the game is going longer. Draven, you are rewarded heavily because they buffed this cash and mechanic. So learning Draven and learning the snowball is very good. So yeah, also, uh, just to you know make sure everyone knows, this is 12.11 the like with the hotfix for the tier list update. So it's pretty up to date, June the 11th, I believe. Yep, today is Saturday, June the 11th. So, Sivir is gonna stay down here with Zaya. They both don't really have a great build at the moment. Zeri is gonna fly up to here somewhere. She belongs above Jinx, but where? Hmm. So Zeri is a little bit weird. It's almost like she is... She's a light, late game hyper carry, but she also has like this learning curve. As much as you would think that she's easy and you just walk up and shoot your cues at them, she actually has a large learning curve with how to macro with her ease and how to rotate to fights. When to use your ultimate. Like, the same way that you would have a learning curve for Draven, Samira, Kalista, Mechanical Champions, her learning curve is more about uh, how to scale to late game safely. She does it a little bit differently because of her E. Her biggest problem is that you can't play the lane for her. Like, let's pretend that your top side is getting destroyed, they're just three-man diving top, and you try to do the opposite play bottom, you can't play this champion's strong side. It's so bad. I can't, like, push the wave for the dive. And it, like, it can only shoot three times, and then they can just hide behind a turret to not get hit by your autos. But I think if you get more experience with her, you can, like, use your W through the enemy turret like blast a whole wave as it's coming in which can then help you play strong side because you clear the wave much faster but yeah it's definitely a learning curve i'm just going to keep her somewhere around here right now whereas like this ap virus build you play like three games of it you've mastered it right so that's something i want to clarify here is the the ap virus build i'm talking about that's this high i think his ad carry on hit build is somewhere around like here with these other crit champions it's okay but it's not fantastic so if you like, if your team was AP heavy and you had to pick him AD, then he would be here. But it's better than picking AP if your team's all AP. <clears throat> Misfortune is still doing statistically pretty well. You can put her at the top of B. I still don't think she's great, but I think Misfortune has one big thing going for her. Hello, hello, Chattington. And the one big thing Misfortune has going for her is Black Cleaver. People don't know it yet, but Misfortune and Ash. Both benefit from it greatly. Actually, we should probably bring Ash below Draven too. Where's Lucian at? He should be up there. Oh, Lucian should go definitely go higher. We'll put Lucian here with Tristana. So, Misfortune. Black Cleaver did not get nerfed. They nerfed Armor Penetration, but not Black Cleaver. Not even in winning items, because nobody's picking out on this champion. You'd have to come through here to find it. Serpent's Fang, gotta be higher than that. Maybe not. Oh, I'm looking at Master Plus. My bad, my bad. That's why the sample size was so bad. Could be in here. 
I mean, it's 55%, but it's such a low pick rate. I can tell you from playing it, it's very good. Like, if you go Grudge 3rd and then Black Lever 4th, or Black Lever 3rd and then Grudge 4th, you're basically doing true damage to people. And on top of that, Black Lever shreds their armor for everybody on your team. So it's really good. It's really, really good. That's the uh, underrated part about Misfortune people don't know right now. So her late game is actually like much better than people think. As long as you hit a good ultimate, because that's how you stack it. If, you're, if your ult gets cancelled or if like somebody engages on you and you can't get your ult off, then the champion sucks. But that's literally your only job with the champion is to sit back and get a good ult off. So just, you know, don't try to auto attack people and get that ult off. Aphelios is still better than Caitlyn. But they're both pretty bad. We can even bring these two down to be honest. I like these lane bullies up here. I think that they're the best lane bullies at the moment. Well, Draven's the best, but he's number one up there alone. Bane is a weaker Zeri at the moment. Even though she has percent damage, Zeri doesn't need percent damage because she'll take out 50% of your HP per crit once she gets Infinity Edge. Jinx is immobile Zeri. Kaiza is... The biggest problem with Kaiza is she doesn't like the support meta at the moment. So we will bring her down. We'll even bring her below these. Just, like, even though she has high pick rate and her stats aren't bad, I can promise you, Kaiza doesn't feel great. Is because she wants to be played with like this Leona Nautilus, and she wants to be played against this Leona Nautilus, and none of that stuff's being played. Very tragic. But she's still not a terrible pick. Like the only picks I would recommend you not to pick right now are probably Caitlyn, Zaya, and Sivir. Aphelios is pretty bad, but he's really fun, and he does have a really good skill ceiling that lets you do crazy combos to win at 30 minutes. Like basically, Aphelios and Jinx, right? We know the Aphelios Jinx meta. Aphelios does become like this late game huge crit. These other three don't because their range is too low, these two, and Caitlyn just doesn't because of how they've balanced her. She has this weird mid game where she sucks. <laughs> is Black Lever MF? Still going with Eclipse, man immune. I am, yeah. No wave clear, yeah. Yeah, my misfortune build is the same with first strike. I've only played two games of it. I've won one, lost one, but both games I felt powerful and had high damage. But both games revolved around big ultimates. Always big ultimates, especially because I run first strike. Like I need to get good ultimates or I don't get any gold, right? Like, if you want to think about first strike that way, let's pretend that you lost, like, 20 CS in lane, and every CS is worth 20 gold, that's 400 gold lost. So you lost three waves, right? Because you're, you took first strike, you can't fight them, you're weak. You lost three waves, 400 gold. But then you just show up mid-game, hit one big ultimate, and you get that 400 gold back. And then every ultimate after that, you're making more gold than what you would have. Like... I think people don't really understand the strength of First Strike. It's the only way to get gold in the game that's like borderline not intended. Treasure Hunter is, but there's a cap. So it's intended, right? Like what other runes give you gold? Graven Cashin gives you gold, but there's a cap based on stacks. Gangplank passive. TF passive, but then they're like, yo, here's first strike. As much damage as you can do, you'll get paid. Good luck. So it's a very skillful rune. And it's very slept on. The only reason MF's not higher is because, you know, late game meta. So if you pick Misfortune and then they pick Zeri, it's hard to punish her and like stop her from just getting to late game. And if you pick Misfortune and they pick Draven, then you also don't win lane phase. So the only thing you win is pressing R with your team. But if your team doesn't pick CC and you can't get a good ultimate off, you lose. But I think that that fairly earns her a spot into the middle. 
because even if you don't have CC, you can still get a good ER combo off if the enemy is like chasing your teammate through a choke point or something and they forget about you or don't know where you are. I think this is a very accurate tier list for 12.11. Anyone have any questions about why champions placed where they are? Because I might have missed one movement. But I don't think so. I mean, arguably I could pull Senna up because she got a buff on killing minions, but I haven't seen Senna, so I don't want to touch her. I also haven't seen Kalista. Kalista could deserve a higher spot, but I haven't seen her. Every time I run in the vein, I shit on her, but I keep putting her high because the, the statistics tell me she's good. But I always crush that champion. <clears throat> Senna D, yeah, Senna is a champion made for duo queue. So if you're playing, like, this is a solo queue tier list. If you're playing solo, I would not recommend just queuing up Senna. I think she's best played in a fasting lane where you like take some CS and like whatever, like if you're if you're duo fasting with a melee champ and the melee champ like can't get one CS because he'll get harassed for it, then you just take it, right? And if you get really good at that playstyle, it's cracked, mega broken. I could probably move both Jinx and Vayne down a tier to be honest, but we'll leave them there for now. But they definitely don't compare to Zeri when I think about late game carry. Zeri should be way higher compared to those two, but Zeri should not be higher compared to like the Varus build. Ezreal's a better weak side than Zeri. Tristan and Lucian are a better strong side. Pogma is actually really OP but people don't know because of the placebo nerfs. 100% better at support but the ADC soul buffs feel good. Yeah so that's what I mean about like the fasting thing because you can it's not just an AD carry soul buff it's a killing minion soul buff so you can be fasting Senna and still kill some minions right. Just depends on like the big thing is you don't want to be missing CS. Yes. But anyway, that's the end of this uh, tier list update. We'll go ahead and put it up on YouTube. 12.11B, I'm gonna call it. Or like hotfix included or something. We'll figure it out. But yeah, make sure to uh, like the video, join the Discord to see my new recommended builds that I'm going to be releasing tomorrow. Zeri is not going to be one of the recommended builds because losing solo queue or losing lane phase in solo queue is not the play in my opinion. And uh, you know, check out the Twitch. If you have a Twitch Prime and you'd like to use it for my stream, that would be awesome. But yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.